Hey, what's going on everybody? Max here with BB and today for 10 minutes max, we're going to be doing some high time frame Bitcoin cycle analysis to hopefully help provide some clarity as to where Bitcoin and crypto as an asset class are within their larger cycle. Spoiler alert, I'm pretty bullish here on the higher time frames. It's going to be tough to shake me out and I'm going to present you guys with the ultra high time frame view as to why that is. Do me a solid guys before we get into the charts. Please consider liking the video and also subscribing to the channel if you are new here. And again, thank you guys in advance for all of the support. Let's not waste any time. We always go way over the allotted 10 minutes. Um, it's kind of a meme at this point. But all right, here is Bitcoin on the ultra, ultra high time frames. Um, as you can see, just normal Bitcoin chart. We're sitting just under 66K right now. Um, I mean, locally, we've been here basically ranging and chopping for... I mean, if you want to count from when we first kind of leveled up here and created our range low until where we're at right now, it's been 145 days of just everybody getting really excited at the highs, everyone just in despair at the lows, and then everybody fighting each other about which way we're ultimately going to break when we're right, right when we're right in between. But we're not here to talk about a local range today. What we're actually here to do is talk ultra high time frame cycles, right? Because I see a lot of people, in my opinion, and I wouldn't say it's a waste of time, right? But let me put it this way, overcomplicating things to a point of sort of like deer in headlight syndrome, right? Or like they have paralysis. They, they, they have so much information to try to absorb and, and use to make their decisions that they they kind of freeze up and they don't have they don't have the conviction to position and they're afraid. Um, and I think that how long we've been ranging here, 145 days, actually only accentuates that that paralysis, right? Or that deer in headlight syndrome where they just freeze up. So we're gonna add on a few things. I I made these charts in advance because I, I didn't want this to be like a 40 minute video. So we'll probably go over 10 minutes like we normally do, but it won't be too long. So I did these drawings in advance um, and we're gonna stitch the chart together and then add on a few different things and talk about it. So ultra high time frame. we're actually gonna put on a line chart here just to get rid of all the noise, okay? Here's the Bitcoin halvings, all right? We're gonna look at the last three. All right, so obviously the most recent one was right in the middle of April, middle to end of April. So Bitcoin halving right here. You can see that we've dipped a little bit after the halving. Uh, in the previous cycle, we had one right in the middle of May 2020. Um, and then we had one in the 2017 cycle, the famous cycle when Bitcoin went, you know, per perfect parabola up to 20K. We had a Bitcoin halving in July of 2016. All right. Now, Something different about this cycle was if you look at the uh, the previous cycles, you can see that Bitcoin very, very clearly um, had a Bitcoin having underneath the previous cycle all time high. All right. That was in the 2016, 17 cycle. Again, over here in the 2020 cycle had the Bitcoin having under the previous cycle all time high. And where are we at currently? All right. We actually had a Bitcoin having well, we were under the previous cycle all time high, but technically we had gotten above the previous cycle all time high by, you know, like a couple thousand points. All right. I wouldn't call that a break through the previous cycle all time high, but there is sort of a, a, a distinct noticeable difference um, in that we did kind of front run what we historically had. And, and you could make the argument that like because we had a double peak instead of like we could have gone like this you know, and maybe gone a little higher instead of having like two peaks, right? I've seen that argument made. So if that had been the case, right, it was kind of a weird cycle and we had COVID to start it. So, you know, then it would have looked something like this, but that's getting really abstract with it. Let's not even go down that rabbit hole, but just kind of a, a different way to look at it. Now let's add on a few more drawings here. Okay. So I made these in advance and I wanted to just talk about this with you guys. All right. So let's see if we can get the two day to show up. Perfect. All right, so if you've been in crypto for a while like I have, you'll know that there is some very spooky things that happen in regards to these Bitcoin cycles where you could look at it every which way, you could overcomplicate it every which way, you could take into account elections and um, you could take into account what stocks are doing, what yields are doing in the U.S., you could look at you know, foreign fiat currencies or domestic here in the U.S. and pair, you know, pair them differently against Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like, I don't, 
it, it, you kind of get tinfoil hat ish with this stuff where it's amazing how the timing of these cycles seems to work over and over again. And that's something I want to discuss with you guys today. All right. So like we've already mentioned, we've got the Bitcoin halvings, you know, marked right here. These, these, uh, black vertical lines are the Bitcoin halvings, all right? We've got three of them marked here. So we're going to look at these three cycles, 2017 cycle, 2020 cycle, and 2024. Now, I've got them in three different colors, and I also have the bear markets marked in red. So three prominent bear markets marked in red, one, two, and three before each cycle. And then I've got times marked out, all right? So let, let's go back here to 2017, and we're going to look at it first, okay? So we had uh, a bear market from the first cycle peak for Bitcoin over here. Uh, this was in November, basically we'll just say Q4 of 2023, all right? And we had a 400-day bear market. So just over one year, you can see that marked in red, okay? And then we bear market bottom, and we go on and basically churn our way back up into the Bitcoin halving. Uh, you know, obviously big corrections along the way. These don't look big, but they're huge. These are 30% corrections, like 30% correction, 35% correction. Like these are huge. Okay. Um, and then we obviously, after the Bitcoin having dropped a little bit, got above the previous cycle, all time high. It's the 2017 cycle. And then we ended up rallying aggressively. You know, this, this was like, you know, a 10 X from, or 20 X from this previous cycle high here this uh, horizontal blue line, all the way to the global top. Now, the interesting part about this is, yes, it was a beautiful, beautiful parabola. Big pullbacks along the way, big shakeouts, but our bear market was 400 days, so just over a year. And our bull market from when we global bottomed, marked by this red dot, so bottom of the bear market, to our global cycle peak before another bear market was 1,067 days. All right, so this was one cycle. Let's move on to the next one. We have a bear market after peaking. Um, oops, we have a bear market after peaking here uh, in Q4, late Q4 of 2017 at like 20,000. It was 19.7. We have a 365-day bear market from cycle peak to the capitulatory bear market bottom. All right, and then we grind up. And actually, this was you know this this was a crazy rally, and then we had a nuke from COVID, right? But again, kind of similar to like how we had a weird top here. You could almost view this cycle in kind of an abstract way where if you wanted to like cut out all of the the noise and, and volatility both ways, you could, you know, you could view this as like an overextension to the upside, over correction to the downside, quick overextension to the upside, which is a reflexive move caused by how oversold we were here. You know, then again, harsher crash than was necessary. And then we actually had like a double peak because of it, where if we had just kind of gone up in 2017 style fashion and split the difference, maybe we would have gone higher, you know, and had a more like uniform style cycle. 2020 was a really, 2020 and 2021 was a really weird cycle. But anyways, point being is we were actually moving up, right? So this was, we were moving up in this direction, even though we went way up and then way down. This was us moving up into the Bitcoin halving, similarly to what we did, um, you know, over here in the previous cycle, again, up. So we typically do that. We capitulate in the bear market, put in a bottom, move up into a Bitcoin halving, um, chop, chop, chop after the Bitcoin halving, and then we go into price discovery. And similarly, we had a 365-day bear market, so one year, and then we had a bull market from our capitulatory bear market bottom to our global top. 1,060 days. Now, quick refresher. Let's go back to the last cycle. 400-day bear market, 1,067-day bull market from bear market low to global top. So kind of similar, right? Similar time for the, the bear market. Very similar time for the bull market. Let's look at where we're at right now. Our bear market was 367 days going from global cycle peak all the way to the capitulatory FTX low. 367 days, so slightly longer than uh, our 20, basically 2018 bear market, okay? Now, what I did is I took the previous two sets of price action from basically our 2017 bear market low to cycle peak, um, 2018 bear market low to the 2021 cycle peak, again, so 1,067 days and then 1,060 days, and I overlaid this amongst the current price action, which is in orange, okay? And I also have the Bitcoin halving labeled there. So we've got our bear market. We have our global cycle bottom with the 2017 price action in blue. 
and the 2020-2021 cycle in purple. All right, let's take a look at where we're at. Very interesting. We just had a Bitcoin halving. Here's these two sets of price action. All right, can even zoom in a little bit. That's fine. So we are right on schedule with the previous two cycles, like almost perfectly, right? We're kind of splitting the difference between the two of them. You can see that you know, the, the two other sets of price action from the previous two cycles is kind of bobbing and weaving around, um, you know, our current price action or our current price actions dancing and diving around the previous two cycles. But point being is we are right in line with previous two cycles. Now I'm going to add an additional piece of confluence on here. Okay. I'm going to mark out the previous two Bitcoin halvings on here. So you can see you have the current halving, right? With our, with our vertical line right here, Bitcoin halving. Okay which is right in April, okay? So you can see current price action is past it, right? We're over here, it's July. Previous halving was in April. I'm gonna mark out on the previous two sets of price action here, 2021 uh, or 2020 and 2016 halving. So let's go back and we'll make sure we got it right. So it was this big pop right here and then sell off right into July, okay? So right before that last drop, Okay, before we went crazy. So let's go forward and mark it out here. Oh, interesting. Would you look at that? 2016 having was right here on the chart, and I'm going to mark it in blue. Interesting. So this blue dot right here was our 2016 having. Hmm. Interesting that our 2024 having, when you overlay the fractals, was at the same spot that the 2016 having was from a fractal cycle perspective. Now let's take a look at 2020, 2021. All right, so here's the COVID drop for this fractal, and then we bounce back and recover, and it was at the early part of this chop before the markup, and then we went crazy. Okay, so right after the recovery from COVID. So let's go back to this fractal, and we'll take a look at it. Where would that be within this fractal? We'll get a, uh, a purple dot out here, and then we will move it. Oops. So here is COVID right here, the COVID drop. And right after the recovery within this fractal was the 2020 Bitcoin halving. So what I find so interesting about this analysis is that the timing of these cycles is, I mean, dare I say spooky, right? For, you know, 365 to 400 day bear markets, you set your cycle low. And then it's choppy, but you grind up into the halving. You get a little correction after the halving, right, or junky price action. And then you go crazy, and your cycle from low to high is 1,060 to 100, you know, 1,067 days, right? And if I mark out the, 20, uh, the 2016 and 2020 Bitcoin halvings on our high time frame cycles that we've overlaid on current price action, within these fractals, they are all within this same region right here. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. All of our Bitcoin halvings, I could even tighten that up. They're all right here. So this is where we're at, right? This is, this is in fact where we would be at most likely is about to go vertical, you know, sometime right after the summertime. And we may go a little before or a little after. I kind of think we'll go before. We, you know, we were leading here, you know, so we led this move where, you know, we had this move in both cycles, right? But we did lead it. So I kind of think that we'll we'll lead the next one again as well. Um, but this is where we're at, right? All three halvings happened at the exact same point in time to one another. That's unbelievable. So if we're on track with every other cycle, that would imply that, you know, we probably rally aggressively from around here until, you know, roughly the end of the year or Q4 have some big correction like, you know, we had pretty big correction here and here, right? Or, you know, I guess you could look at both of these as a big correction, but it would imply that we probably rally into the end of the year, have a big correction, and then can probably have like another big echo bubble or continuation all the way through Q3 um, of 2025. And that would keep us perfectly in line with, with previous cycles based on halvings and also the current price action overlaid with the past, I mean, literally decades worth of price action. It's pretty unbelievable. Now, we're going to add on um, another bit of confluence here. We've already talked about how, I mean, 
look at this. this is unbelievable. Let's talk about ETH BTC. Let's put ETH BTC on here just quickly and see see how ETH BTC looks in regards to our high time frame cycles. When has ETH BTC decided to perform tremendously well? Let's give it a moment. Let's put these candles on here. So here's our, our Bitcoin study again up top, and then here's ETH BTC. And then our vertical lines uh, in black are the Bitcoin halvings. Typically, right after the Bitcoin halving, before the cycle peak, is when Bitcoin ETH against Bitcoin has gone crazy. Again, here's the halving. Moves up after the Bitcoin halving. The low is in. Um, and we, you know, we put in a top sometime before the cycle top, right? Very similar to what happened over here. So what could we be doing right now? Potentially something like this. And then we kind of cool off into the cycle top and then, you know, we correct something like that. So I just wanted to point out where we are potentially within this broader cycle, um, you know, and what maybe we could expect moving forward. I mean, I just, I find this absolutely unbelievable looking at these cycles, how you look at current price action in orange, you look at 2020 and you look at 2016, 2017 cycle and the timing of the bear markets into the bull markets are the same and the price action. Yes, they're, you know, they're all on the same trajectory, right? Like you can see this very clearly, like right here until things go parabolic, like we are within like this bracket, right? And if you exclude, like we talked about this big overshoot in June of 2019 and then COVID, it's even tighter than that. Like all of the price action excluding, you know, and here I'll even draw on the exclusion, right? Excluding this, excluding COVID, and excluding the, you know, reflexive rally off of the bear market capitulation, all of your price action, you know, for, I mean, we could even, we'll take a measured move from bear market low in all three cycles until presumably when things go parabolic and spread out for 700 days are all within this tight little channel right here, you know, just a tight little green channel, you know, and you've had a couple deviations, but like we're right on track and it's supposed to start heating up really, really soon right? Like this is supposed to like, according to these two cycles, like we're, we're right on track, you know, we're right in here. Things should get nuts guys. But all right, that's all I got for you today. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. Do me a favor, please consider liking and also subscribing before you go. Last but not least, guys, check out the first link in the description below where you can sign up for our Discord. It is 100% transparent. We share all of our active positions, TA setups, things we don't talk about here on YouTube or on X. And again, what you could expect is over two hours a day of private live voice calls with Q&A from me and the entire BB team. It is an unparalleled experience, nothing like it. And additionally, within the next three weeks, you're going to get free access included in your existing Discord membership to our new flagship product called the BB Terminal. Guys, it's got portfolio tracking, derivatives data, heat maps, high time frame DCA indicators, literally everything that you can need or want to succeed in these markets all bundled into one super website. And that's going to be given to you for free in your existing Discord membership. So sign up sooner rather than later, guys. First link in the description. Second link in the description is to our BB Academy, guys. We spent six months meticulously curating and crafting what we would consider to be the best, most comprehensive trading course on the market. Me and the BB team sat down and we put together all of our most effective time-tested strategies that we have accrued over cumulatively decades of successfully navigating financial markets all compiled into one masterclass. There's a lot of people teaching TA guys, a lot of people teaching the right stuff and a lot of people teaching the wrong stuff. We can sift through all that garbage and save you a lot of time and a lot of money learning the wrong strategies. We can teach you the right ones, guys. Check out that second link in the description below. Support BB and support your training journey all in one. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Please like and subscribe and we will see you next time. Take care.